In these problems, we're being asked to factor fourth degree polynomials, which might seem like a pretty difficult task. And one of the ways you could approach this would be to come up with some likely candidates for what the factors could possibly be. And I'll show you how to do that with the rational roots test um, in just a minute. And then do some polynomial division when we have a likely candidate. Do that a couple of times to try to get it down to a quadratic, and then see if we can factor the quadratic or use the quadratic formula. That's a lot of work. That kind of work actually gets a lot easier if you use a technique called synthetic division. So before we go on with this, I think I'm going to just show you synthetic division really quickly. And let's do this with maybe um, a simpler uh, thing, maybe a quadratic. So let's pick a quadratic we already know. So let's say x squared plus 6x um, plus 9. Okay. So that one we could factor, and it's obviously going to be x plus 3 and x plus 3. So we know the factors ahead of time on this one. But if we didn't, we would set up a synthetic division problem by taking the coefficients of each of the terms. So the x squared term coefficient is 1, the x term coefficient is 6, and then the constant is 9. Now, if we were missing the x term here, we'd put in a 0 in that place. We can't leave the place blank. Then I'm going to draw a little box here. And over here, we're going to put what we're div dividing by. Here is where our answer will be. And here is the remainder spot. And we're trying to get that to equal 0 to know that whatever we're dividing by really is a factor. What we put up here, if the factor is x plus 3, what we put up here is the, the 0 or the root. So that would be actually x minus 3. If, or sorry, minus 3. x equals minus 3. x plus 3, if we solve that for x, it's negative 3. Now, to do the synthetic division, we start here in the first column, and we just bring the 1 down. Whatever number's there, you bring it down. Then you multiply 1 times negative 3 and put that up here. Then you add down the column. So 6 plus a negative 3 is 3. Then we go back to multiplying. Negative 3 times 3 is negative 9. Then we add down the column, and lo and behold, we get a 0 there, which is wonderful. That means this is one of the uh, answers, one of the roots, one of the zeros. So that means x plus 3 is a factor. Here, we can translate this back into uh, an algebraic expression. The 1 is the x term, the 3 is the constant. So this would be x plus 3. So our total list of factors would be x plus 3 and x plus 3. So that's how you use synthetic division. And with these longer problems, it can really come in handy and speed things up. So let's try one one of these fourth degree ones uh, with some synthetic division. Now, to figure out what numbers to try, we won't know the factors of this ahead of time, of course. To figure out what, what numbers to try, you're going to use something called the rational roots test. You're going to take all the factors of the constant term over all the factors of the uh, highest term. So in this case, it would be the factors tw of 12 over 1, which is just themselves, and over 2. So the factors of 12 would be 1, 2, and actually, we need to do plus and minus for this whole thing. 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, and 12. And then if I'm also putting these numbers over 2, that would add 1 half and 3 halves. And I think that's it, because 4 halves is 2, 6 halves is 3. Yeah. So those are the list of possible factors. And that's how we use the rational roots test there. So we can pick from this list. As you can see, there's quite a few to pick from. So we kind of have to do some trial and error. Maybe we'll get lucky. Maybe we won't get lucky. But let's give it a try. We'll set this one up. I'm going to put the coefficients from all my terms in order. So 2, 5, negative 5, negative 20, and negative 12. We'll set up our thing here. That's where the remainder goes. And let's see. I think I'll try with, oh, I don't know. Let's try 1. It makes the math easy to start with lower numbers. So I start by pulling the 2 down, multiply. 1 times 2 is 2. I get 7 there when I add. 1 times 7, 7. Add those, I get 2. 1 times 2 is 2. Here I get negative 18. 1 times negative 18 is negative 18. And I end up with negative 30 here, which is not 0. So 1 doesn't work. So x minus 1, not a factor. Didn't get lucky off the bat, but let's not give up. We'll try again. Let's see. I'm going to set this up one more time. And maybe I will try, oh, negative 2 this time. Just looking at the numbers, I'm thinking maybe this might work. 
So bring down the 2, multiply, add, multiply, add, multiply, add, multiply. Aha! So we've got negative 12, positive 12 adds up to 0. So our remainder is 0. That means this is a, fa uh, a solution. So the factor is going to be x plus 2. So we found one factor so far. And now we have this problem here, which is actually a cubic, 2x cubed plus x squared minus 7x minus 6. And we're going to do a synthetic division on this at least one more time, hopefully just one more if we get lucky. And this time I think I'm going to try a positive 2 there. Let's see if that works. So I'll bring the 2 down, 2 times 2 is 4, 4 and 1 is 5, 2 times 5 is 10, and negative 7 is 3, 2 times 3 is 6, aha, I had a hunch and we've got a um, remainder of 0. So x minus 2 is also a factor. We've got two out of our four factors. And this, remember, is a quadratic now. So 2x squared plus 5x plus 3. And I think we can factor that to 2x plus 3 and x plus 1. Yeah, I think so. So to make our total list of factors, I'm going to add the x plus 2 and the x minus 2. And we have done it. We've factored that fourth degree using synthetic division. Let's try one more, just so we've got this down. All right. So here, we've got another one. We're going to set it up for synthetic division. So 2, 7, tw negative 29, negative 112, and negative 48. Wow, these numbers don't look very friendly. That's all right. We'll... Uh, We'll suffer through here. So let's see. Maybe we'll try, I don't know, a negative 1. Bring the 2 down, multiply, add, multiply, add, multiply, add, let's see, it's negative 78, I think. Multiply, uh huh. And that definitely does not end up with a 0 in the uh, remainder position. So we're going to have to try this again. This one didn't work. So we'll set it up. 2, 7, negative 29, negative 112, negative 48. And let's see. Hmm. I think I'm going to try something a little higher. Maybe a negative 4 here. And I didn't do this step explicitly at first, but I saw that the factors uh, we have 48 for our constant, so 1, 2, 4, 6, 8, 12, 24, over 1 and 2. So that's what I'm kind of drawing from. So I'm thinking I'm going to try this negative 4 uh, next. So I'll draw down the 2, multiply, that's a negative 8, so that's a negative 1, times negative 4 is a positive 4, that would be a negative 25, hmm times a negative 4 is going to be a positive 100. Ah, this might work. So that's going to be a negative 12 times a negative 4. That's a positive 48. Yes. And we get a 0 for a remainder. So we've got negative 4 as a solution. That means x plus 4 is a factor. Now, let's see what we can do next here. You know, I think I might try positive 4 on this. So 2 times 4 is 8. That's 7. That's 28, uh-huh, and that's going to be 3 times 4 is positive 12. That did work out. Wonderful. Okay, we kind of got lucky there. So x minus 4 is also a factor, and we've, we're down to our quadratic. We've got 2x squared plus 7x plus 3, and let's see, I think this will factor too. So 2x plus 1 and x plus 3. Does that do it? Yeah, I think it does. So, and then I'll add our other factors in here. We had x plus 4 and x minus 4. So, that is how you go about factoring fourth degree polynomials using the rational roots test and some synthetic division.